Biotechnology involves the formation of life forms into useful, usually commercial products, such as diagnostic kits, vaccines, improved crop varieties, such as pest and drought-resistant crops, and new bacteria strains, through manipulating the genes of living organisms on their parts. For example, different types of seeds have been genetically modified to become drought-resistant to diseases, insects, and drought. In South Africa, a good example is the Bt maize variety, which is resistant to maize stalk borer. The water-efficient maize for Africa, Wema, that is drought-resistant, is another example. Lebuchang Maile, MEC for Economic Development, Environment, Agriculture and Rural Development, is seen here sharing his views on the socio-economic importance of biotechnology. The biotech fundi communicates our unambiguous intent to make headway in the innovation space and position Gauteng as a leader of innovation in strategic sectors of the economy. Biotechnology is interlinked with bioeconomy, and from a broad economic perspective, the bioeconomy refers to the set of economic activities relating to the invention, development, production, and use of biological products and processes. Taneg Ambasa, G.HOD, speaks about the need to increase biotechnology capacity and resources, including the need to ensure effective regulations and public understanding of biotechnology. Gauteng is one of the smallest provinces in the country. We don't have adequate land for agricultural development. We face challenges relating to in-migration. 27% of the country's population is in Gauteng. Food security then becomes a priority. We have to look at various innovations, including uh, various technologies that we can utilize to improve productivity, usage of this small land that we have, to make sure that the quality of the food or the production that we get is of, of uh, acceptable standards, to mitigate, more importantly, the challenges that are associated with the climate change. When it comes to climate change particularly, we have to look for crops that are resistant firstly to diseases, but also resistant to drought. A typical intervention or positive result that emanated from our biotechnology interventions is the development of the water-efficient maize for Africa. Mutlajo Makapia, GDAR Director Technology Development Support from the Agriculture Chief Directorate, speaks about the Biotech Fundi Awards Incentives and their impact since their introduction in 2007. He also talks about the notable achievements that have been made so far, working in partnerships with experts in the biotechnology industry. We have put in place an incentive program where we recognize uh, experts in, in, in biotechnology expertise uh, from students to seasoned researchers uh, through the awards scheme. The Gauteng Biofundi Award Scheme is the main, uh, is, is one of the platforms where we recognize excellence in this particular area. And also we have uh, partnered with international organizations uh, whereby some of the students that have won through this uh, Biofundi Awards have uh, been uh, transported to go to the international conference uh, such as the Agricultural Biotechnology International Conference. There's a number of achievements that uh, the department has achieved. The notable achievements include uh, the bursaries and internship program where more than 400 students have, have been sponsored already uh, with the uh, uh, qualifications at uh, the five universities that we are partnering with. Uh, namely the University of Pretoria, Tuani University of Technology, Vets University, Val University of Technology, as well as uh, University of Johannesburg. The last indication we got from Grain South Africa was that uh, about 70% of, of the maize crop in the country is produced through genetically modified crops. In our work, uh, we are interested in finger millet, otherwise known as rapoko. We are also interested in sorghum. We are interested in pearl millets. These are climate-resistant crops. 
these are the kind of crops which would do very well in South Africa and in Gauteng. Those are the kind of links that we would really like to have with, with, with GDAT. I was the winner of the Young Researcher Award of the Biotech Fundies Award 2015, um, where they recognised my work on the development of a novel diagnostic uh, for malaria. So it's very similar to an uh, at-home pregnancy test, uh, where you, it's a pee-on-the-stick pregnancy test and it tells you whether you're pregnant or not. But we're hoping to not reinvent the wheel, but to rather make this current technology more sensitive and more stable by using a novel microsphere. If people in rural areas are able to diagnose themselves, they can feel more confident in their workplace as well. So they'll be able to work in the fields and work in the agricultural environment with, uh, with more confidence, knowing that they can test themselves and make sure that they stay healthy and that they get the treatment that they need when they need it. Uh, the grant that I received from uh, the Biotech Fundi Awards, which was sponsored by GDARD, um, will be used uh, to take my research a little bit further and more specifically to attend conferences so that I can showcase the phenomenal groundbreaking research that we do here in South Africa. The research that we're doing ties in with agricultural production and specifically um, linking to what GDAD's goals are is to actually target your subsistence farmer that grows, lo grows local produce um, for a sustainable income. So what we're trying to do is, most of the time the water that they use is contaminated with metals that are not, um, that are hazardous to human health. Especially on the West Rand, we've got a lot of mine tailings there and a lot of that acid mine decant, decants into the natural sources, natural water sources. So even though the metals get diluted downstream, when they get to the local communities, they're still in a high enough concentration that they're actually hazardous to human health. So what we're trying to do with our research is to actually clean up those small volumes of water, remove the metals so that we don't get food chain transfer from the water to the soil and to their produce. So that when they actually sell their produce at the local markets, it's safe enough for everyone to consume and you don't have that food chain transfer of metals from contaminated water up until the, the fruit or the vegetable that they're producing. My research project involves working with a specialized group of nematodes referred to as entomopathogenic nematodes, or EPNs for short, as well as their associated bacteria. Now what's interesting about these nematodes and their bacteria is that they have the ability to infect and kill various insect pests. In addition to that, I have worked on two novel bacterial species and have been the first to publish their draft genomes, so that's quite exciting. In terms of their, their benefit, um, there wouldn't be a need to use chemical pesticides or there'll be a reduced need to use chemical pesticides because these nematodes are specific to the insect. There's no, um, there's, there's no instance where they can actually harm human beings as such. And I'm sure you're aware that chemical insecticides have numerous environmental as well as health risks. So this will alleviate some of that burden, usage of these nematodes for biocontrol purposes. So the recognition was good, but it would also be good for JIDA to actually have ring fenced funding for such um, projects which will benefit uh, communities. Tanegambasa, GDOT HOD, give us the future outlook on GDOT's biotechnology work in Gauteng province. We want to see more development in the biotech space, but we want to make sure that it's a responsible development, it's well regulated, and uh, thirdly, we want all our communities to understand exactly what biotechnology is all about, to deal with the misconceptions that are out there in the public space.